Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good to see everyone tonight. It's lovely and cosy in here, isn't it? It's lovely and warm. It's good to see everyone. Hope you all had a good afternoon, a great morning this morning. Good to be back tonight in the house of the Lord. And looking forward to Pastor bringing the word a little bit later on and having a time of prayer together as well. And um, just don't forget our services this co- upcoming week. Um, tomorrow morning, um, 10.30 is our Monday morning prayer meeting. If you can make along to that, it would be great to see you. If not, why don't you just nip out wherever it is you are about 10.30 and have five, 10 minutes of prayer. And then we know that we're praying along with those that are here. And um, that would be great. Um, Tuesday, 6.30 to 7.30, Lighthouse Kids. And then 7.45 is our prayer meeting and our devotional. And I'll be bringing the devotional on Tuesday. Wednesday morning um, from 10 to 12 is Mums and Tots. And then on Friday evening from 7 to 9 is Thrive Youth. Looking forward to next Lord's Day already. Paul will be bringing um, the word next Sunday morning. And Pastor will be bringing the word next Sunday evening. <coughs> um, also, as I said this morning, if you took one of the shoebox uh, appeals for the for the Chris, for Christmas, if you could bring them in um, as soon as possible, that would be great. They need to be shipped away. So... Uh, it'd be great if you could hand them in and we'll get them sent away. We'll open up with a word of prayer and then we'll hand over to the praise and worship team. Bless the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We we'll praise you, Lord, once again for an opportunity for us to gather together as a group of brothers and sisters, Lord, thank just you, Lord. to lift your precious name on high. Lord, we love gathering together, Lord. Lord, we love gathering together in your house. We love coming together just to praise your precious name and lord we have so much to thank and praise you for lord a countless things and blessings lord that you surround each and every single one of us with and we thank you and we praise you for each and every single one of them lord we thank you what has already taken place in your house today lord we thank you lord for this morning service and lord it's so good for us to be back again tonight lord lord we just pray lord that as we do every week that everything that's said and done lord would be satisfactory to you lord lord that you would be glorified and lifted on high this evening lord lord you you are so worthy of our praise tonight lord so lord we pray that it would be sweet sounding to your ear lord lord bless pastor as he brings your word later on lord we thank you for pastor we thank you for lynn lord Lord, for the blessing that they are to this fellowship, Lord. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would have your hedge of protection around them. Lord, that you would keep them safe and healthy and well, Lord. And Lord, what we pray for Pastor and Lynn, we pray for their entire family circle, Lord. Lord, that you'd be with them every step, as we know that you will be. And Lord, give them fruits for their labour, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that we would hear in coming days, Lord, that somebody has, has given their life to you, Lord, that a new name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord. Lord, we'll be mindful to give you and you alone the glory. Lord, we know that there's those that are having to sit at home, Lord, who who would love to be amongst us tonight, Lord, would love to be here praising you with us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're an all-knowing God, that you know every situation. Lord, will you just place your hand upon those that would need a touch, Lord. Lord, if even for those that are here tonight who have managed to make it out, Lord, but Lord, still need that touch from you. Lord, we come before the one who is able, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you just place that capable healing hand upon them. And Lord, that you would surround them with your peace, which surpasses all understanding. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we love you, Lord. And we ask all these things in your precious name, giving you thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, David. Folks, let's stand there and feet and let's praise the Lord this evening. Hallelujah. Say it all the time, but I'll never tire of saying he's worthy of all of our praise. Bless you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is Praise within me. Lord. Bless his holy name. Good evening again, folks. Evening. Good evening. to see you back in the house of the Lord again this evening. And we trust and pray that tonight you'll be blessed. We're blessed this morning. And I trust and pray we'll be blessed this evening. Before we turn to the God's word, let's just bow our heads once again and ask for the Lord's help in Jesus' lovely name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the songs that we have just sung and the meaning behind each and every single one of them. That you are indeed faithful. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. And Lord, bless our bless our your heart this evening. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So, Father, we pray as we come to your word now that you would help us, O oh God, and encourage your people here tonight. Trust and pray, O oh God, that this word that we bring would bring us closer, even closer to you, O oh God. That Lord, it would speak to our hearts, it would speak to our souls. And Lord, it will be a blessing, not only to ourselves, O oh Lord, but I pray it will be a blessing in heaven as well too. Lord, we think of a good night across the Facebook Live and in other places. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless this word. That Lord, perhaps someone watching doesn't know you as their own and personal saviour. But Lord, I pray that something will be said tonight would speak to their hearts, would resonate with their souls. And Lord, I pray that they would go in for salvation, for time, and for all eternity. Lord, we know the day is short. Lord, we're just singing there, come in the evening. Lord, we're living in the evening, as it were. But Lord, the day of grace is fast coming to your close. So, Father, we pray that you would continue to move and save and bless in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. amen. And amen. If you have your Bible with you this evening, come with me to 1 Peter. We were there this morning with wisdom. But come with me to, with, to 1 Peter, please, and chapter 2. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 7. It's the first opening remark of this little verse that always speaks to my heart. Unto you therefore, which believe, he is precious. It's the Lord Jesus, isn't he precious? Bless unto Lord. you therefore, which believe, he is pressure, precious. But unto them which, are, which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner that's all i want to read this evening i mean the lord will bless the reading of his wonderful wonderful word you know folks the stone which the builders refused or disallowed didn't want you know when he came on to his own his own received them not they cast them away they said we will not have him to rule over us crucify him that's what they did. They disowned him altogether. He was a man of sorrows and he was acquainted with grief. Yet, this same stone that the builders disallowed, this same stone is the head of the corner. And folks, he's not only our firm foundation, but he's also our cornerstone. He's the cornerstone of the faith. He's the chief cornerstone. As I say, the one the builders rejected and threw away is now the king of our hearts. The one that we sing to. The one that we say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And folks, because of this, and I thought about this over the last number of days, he is our greatest desire. There should be no other desires that we should have before him. And folks, I know that we're only, we're only human beings. There are things that we like, and there are things that we, uh, that, that we like to do, and there are things that we like to be around, and people we like to be around. But ultimately, the greatest desire of all should be the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, I'm speaking to myself here this evening. It should be the greatest desire of all. In fact, whenever you think of it, he should be our very first thought in the morning and he should be our last thought in the evening. He should be the first person that we speak to in the morning and he should be the very last person that we speak to in the evening as well too. And why, why do I say that? Because he is our champion. Glory to God. Look at what he has done for us. Look at what he has brought us through. If I was to stop here this evening, turn off the cameras and go from person to person and say, right, okay, tell me about the night that you were saved. And tell me about how God has brought you to this point now. And of course, I know you'll tell me some of the pits and troughs that you've been in, but didn't the Lord bring you out? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, about some of the illnesses you had to face, yeah. but didn't the Lord bring you through? Yeah. Whenever you had people come against you, going toe to toe, nose to nose, did the Lord bring you through? When things were falling apart round about you and you were going, I'm in despair. You looked to the heavens and who was there? 
He was there right with you. He wasn't away above the clouds, far away off in the distance. He was right there beside us. He is our great champion. Look at what he has saved us from. Hallelujah. Look at what he's going to bring us to. I am sometimes surprised why people aren't saved at all. I truly, really, when you think of what kind of a life that you have. Yes, I know we'll have our troubles. The Bible tells us that. In this world, you'll have tribulation. It doesn't stop there. It continues. It says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And because he has overcome the world, we'll overcome the world. Because he has overcome all the trials and tribulations and all the difficulties, folks, we will do the same. And folks, ultimately, he's our savior. He's the champion over the grave. He's the mighty to save. And as we think upon the Lord Jesus, I want to think about three testimonies in Scripture, or from Scripture, showing us that no matter, these are, these are the little points as it were, no matter the place, no matter where you are, no matter the personalities that are there, because there's always personalities, aren't there? Don't worry about that. And no matter the pointing fingers, there's my three Ps. It took me a long time to get that third one, you know. Oh, I racked my head over that one. But no matter the place, no matter the personalities, no matter about the pointing fingers, all of those things, the object of our affection must always be first and last, the Alpha and the Omega. Let me tell you who he is. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. He must be the first and the last in our lives. With the help of the Lord this evening, I want to take a few moments to look at three snapshots. Go into the scriptures, as it were, and just take a little photograph, click, and put it upon our memories to remember the places, the personalities, and the pointing fingers, and we'll overcome all of these things. You know, I want to talk about Mary, not his mother, but Mary. And are these three, these three snapshots could possibly be the same woman. Some theologians say it could have been Mary Magdalene, some say it could have been Mary of Bethany. It doesn't matter who it was, it was one of the Marys. And we'll learn from what she did. But anyway, first one is I want you to come to with me to Simon the Pharisee's house in Luke chapter 7. Take time to read it yourself from verse 36 to verse 50. This Pharisee has desired that the Lord would come and have food at his home. You know, it's a good thing to have a desire to have Jesus in your home. But you see, here's the thing. This man only wanted it for some kind of a, a status or to, to be seen. For him to, to, when he goes about with his pharisaical cronies, that he can say, hey, you'll never guess who I had around in my house the last couple of days. I had Jesus of Nazareth with me. He really wasn't interested in who Jesus was. He really wasn't interested in what, 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 what Jesus was about. But he invited him to his home. And the Lord being gracious, and the Lord being who he is, he went. He always accepts that, that invitation. So the Lord goes to his home. And as he's seated in the house, I think it's wonderful. A woman of the city, it says. And in brackets, a sinner. A woman of the city. A sinner. Some would say a woman of the city. That simply means a prostitute. A woman who worked the streets. And here she is. She comes into the house. And carrying under her arm is this. A simple little alabaster box of ointment. And she comes and she sees the Lord Jesus there. And what does she do? The Bible says in this account that she stood behind them and she wept. And she wept and she wept. My goodness, to think about this. You know, in his presence, the Bible says, there's fullness of joy, is there not? But how he was being treated at this moment in time broke this woman's heart. That she stood behind him and she stood there at, and she was down at his feet and she was weeping. Folks, as she begins to weep. Now look, when you think of this, maybe it's just me. But when there's times whenever you cry, isn't that right? You know, I was told when I was growing up, boys don't cry. And I was told I got a wee bit older, big boys don't cry. And I was told, real men don't cry. You know what I've learned? Real men do cry. Nothing wrong with that, you know. There's nothing wrong with a man showing a bit of sympathy or a bit of empathy. But you know, whenever you cry, there's one you don't have a, a wee run of tears down your. But this woman, 
she wept. Really wept. In fact, she wept so much that the tears that she cried from her eyes were enough to wash his feet. How much water left this woman's eyes? When you think about that for a moment, that she, she was down at his feet and she wept and she wept and she wept and the water washed his feet. And of course, she also began to dry his feet with her hair. She is right down at the very floor. She can't go any lower. But there she is and she's doing a wonderful thing here. And then when she dries his feet, what does she do? She opens the alabaster box and she begins to anoint his feet with that wonderful ointment. You know, when you stop and you say, why did this woman do this? What was this about? Why did she do this? This woman did this for one reason. It was this. She was so grieved within her spirit of how the Lord was being treated. So grieved. Why? Because Simon the Pharisee, the man who invited the Lord Jesus into his house, didn't do the customary thing, which was to get down with a basin and a towel and to wash his guest's feet. In fact, there's no higher an insult, especially at this time, when you bring someone to your home and not do that. Brought the Savior in through the door, set him in a place, and never washed his feet. Had no concern for him whatsoever, no courtesy whatsoever. And when she wept, when she witnessed this great disrespect to the Lord Jesus, got right down to his feet and wept and wept and wept and washed his feet with her tears, dried it off with her hair, and as I say, anointed his feet with that, 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 that oil, that ointment that she had, had there. You know, as we sometimes forget about that. We sometimes forget about the story behind this, you know. And this is this. This is what really spoke to me. Do we weep? Do we? Do we weep when the world disrespects him? Does it not grieve our hearts and our souls whenever we hear his name being used as a swear word? To see him being used and, and, and mocked and scorned in, in every situation? You're sitting watching the TV some night and you're watching some comedian. It doesn't take them very long before they come around and stop mocking the Lord Jesus. But I can't get the robe quick enough. There's something we really shouldn't be watching on TV at all, you know. But the, the, should we? Should, but we, what we do, we switch it off and we go, ah, well, that's just the way of the world. No, it should grieve our hearts. It should grieve us right within our spirit, whatever we think of it. Because when you look at it in this world today, they wouldn't say it about all the false gods of this world. They wouldn't dare. They wouldn't mock the devil on the TV. They wouldn't dare. How dare they mock the king of glory and then laugh and the whole auditorium laugh with it. Folks, this world hates our savior. Every facet of this world hates our savior. The politicians hate our savior. Hollywood hates our savior. The music industry hate him. Hate him and hate everything he stands for. And yet if truth be told, and we're all guilty, I'm a couple of Adams, we're all guilty of partaking of all those wee things, are we not? And yet they hate him. Folks, let's not get in bed with them, as it were. Let's have no time for them. Maybe it's time that we get back to total separation from the world. They mocked him. See how the world mocks him. Mock, what do they do? They mock his salvation. They mock that. The thing he offers to us freely. He's offered it to the entire world. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What do they do? They cast it back into his face. And they say this. Your cross means nothing to us. Your death means nothing to us. Your suffering means nothing to us. Those nails driven into your hands and your feet and the crown of thorns that you wore on your head mean nothing to us. And they'll lampoon and they'll mock it every way that they can. How very, very sad. You know, folks, I know when you read through that account, it says, you know, if, if they had a new, that spoke among themselves, and they said, you know, if he had been a prophet, he would have known what sort of a woman it was that has come and done this thing. He knew exactly what sort of a woman she was. Folks, he knew exactly what sort of a man I was. He knew exactly what sort of a person you were as well. And he still accepted you. Praise Come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you 
rest. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful, wonderful rest. Folks, we know that this woman, the scripture says, had been what? Forgiven much. My goodness, stop and think for a moment. How were you not forgiven much as well too? Or do we some way think that we were better than this woman and that we deserved salvation in some way? Never. I would be affronted, folks, if behind us on that screen we'll put up the sins that I have committed after being saved. Never mind before. I've been forgiven much. Lord, help us to weep at your feet. I don't know the Lord doesn't want us to be a weeping people. He wants us to be a people that rejoice. But there should be things. There should be things that grieve us. You know, this woman cried tears to wash his feet. And the Pharisees, they didn't even greet the Lord with a kiss. And what did she do? She threw her arms around him and she kissed him again and kissed him again and again and again. And it wasn't like Judas. When Judas came into the garden that night and kissed him and then prayed him with a kiss, she kissed him profusely. And you know what I think about this was this, that this woman kissed him without ceasing. And she wasn't concerned with what? The pointing fingers. It was not interested in what people had to say. It wasn't interested that people were saying, see that woman? I'll tell you all about her. I know exactly what sort of a woman that she was. And the reality is this, that some of those Pharisees who were standing there pointing their finger were probably using some of her services as well. Hypocrites, they're rotten lot of them. But she wanted to get to the person. Not interested in the pointing fingers. She wanted to get to the person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I honestly believe that we need to get to that person as well too, don't we? He should be the object of our desire. Should we be the same no matter what, no matter what you're called? No matter what people point, with the condemning fingers or the wagging tongues, he's the most important person in your life. You have to say this, you know, but your husband could let you down, you know. Well, I couldn't tell you how often I'm sure I'd let him down. She hasn't told me, like, but I'm sure. And your wife could let you down, your kids could let you down, your nearest and dearest, your kith and kin could let you down. He'll never let us down. Folks, he's precious. Praise you, Lord. Another wee snapshot. Let's go to another home. Another Simon this time. Simon the leper's house at Bethany. Mark 14 verses 3 to 9 tells us the story there as well too. And where's the Lord Jesus this time? He's at the back of the house. And he's sitting there. And as they sit to eat their meal, in comes another woman. Possibly the same one. We're not going to debate about that this evening. But in comes a woman carrying... An alabaster box. Now, the last time there was, a, was an alabaster box as well. But here she's coming in with an alabaster box again. Full of spite, Lord, the scripture tells us. Also, very precious. That's a sermon in itself, you know. Are what we bring unto the Lord precious? Or are we just like those that they talk about in Malachi? Bringing the lame and bringing all that. Well, sure, that would do the Lord. When, we, when we're bringing our offerings, ah, you know, that'll do the Lord. When we're not really offering to the Lord, where we're tipping the Lord. How dare we? And listen, I'm not asking for your money this evening. The Lord owns the cattle on the thousand hills, and the thousand hills beside, and all the gold and the silver that's in this world's his. So we don't need a few shackles from you guys. But what I'm saying is this. Let's not just tip the Lord. Give as he has given. And listen, I'm speaking to myself here too. And that's one thing that we learned very early on in our walk with the Lord was this. So well. So into the kingdom of God. So into it. And don't be expecting it back. But he gives you it back anyway. Cast your bread upon the water, the, the scripture says. And no doubt it shall return unto you. What you, sow, what you. You'll reap what you sow. If you're sowing, you'll reap mighty. If you're sowing little, you'll reap little. And we don't put into the basket Sunday after Sunday. And I just thought, well, I'll get this back at the end of the week. He said, Lord, use this for your honor and for your glory. I digress. Get back to where we were. It's just carrying an alabaster box with this spike nerd, as the Bible says, very precious. And she makes her way past all of the personalities that are there. Last time it was pointing fingers. They were looking at personalities here in the room. And she comes to the one at the back of the room and she breaks open the alabaster box and she pours the oil all over his head. 
The whole just you could just see it. She breaks it open and pours it all over his wonderful, wonderful head. And there they are, they're sitting there, and they begin to talk and they begin to wag their tongues and they begin to point their fingers. All the personalities here there. Folks, that's how we think for a moment. Of the personalities who were there. Well, you're just walking past Simon Peter, the great fisherman. The man who's going to stand up in a few days' time on the day of Pentecost and see 3,000 souls brought to Christ. Wow, what a man. Not interesting. John, who gave us that wonderful gospel and gave us that wonderful revelation on the end of Patmos. True, wonderful servant of God. Excuse me. The one who lay in the Saviour's breast, heard the very heartbeat of God. No, past John, not interesting. All the rest who were there. Lazarus was there. Because he knew he's only risen from the dead a number of days before. Could you imagine the clamour of people coming to see this man who spent four days in the grave? Coming along and saying, Lazarus, what was it like? What was it like being dead? What a question. Saint, what was it like being dead? Was that terrible? You were held in the grip of the enemy. Now you're alive in him. And you're free of all the bands of sin. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. I'll let me get a drink of Adam's ale here. <laughs> Somebody put the heat on. Shame on you. Now. <laughs> I kid. Bless the Lord. Folks, she wasn't interested in the personality she was there. And when they all began to complain, and they all began to say, Oh, she spoiled her night. Would you look at this? See if you're sitting here. In the room, and she comes in with this alabaster box and breaks it open and pours out this oil all over him. What a waste. And they begin to say, it wasn't just Judas. A lot of theologians say, oh, it was Judas because he was in charge of it. No, no. Scripture says, they all, all of them, all of the greats and the good, they all say, it. what a waste. We could have sold that. And we could have given the money to the poor. That says, and they murmured against her. I hate that word, murmur. Murmur. Do you know what, know what it means when you come see it? It's, 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 it's a derivative. Uh, the very bottom. It's, it's, it's mer, mer. It's mer, mer. Better, better. Don't ever be a murmur. Don't be better. Don't be better, better. That's what they were murmured against me. <coughs> Folks, before I move on a wee bit quicker, have you ever been murmured about? Have you ever had somebody saying bad things about you? No? Well, give it time. <laughs> give it time. Somebody will have something to say about you. But it hasn't come to your ears yet. You ever have people murmuring about you? Even within the church, you're trying to serve the Lord. You're trying to do what God has called you to do. Bring you into the, the fullness of what he wants for you. And people murmur, who, who, who do you think they are? Who does she think she is? How dare she come into our meeting and do this? The Lord stands and rebukes them. And I think it's wonderful. And he says this, let her alone. Hallelujah. Why trouble her? For she has done a good thing. She has wrought a good work on me. This woman, this Mary, pushed through the crowd to get to the Savior. In that room full of personalities, the great disciples that we all love and revere. And she pushed through. She wasn't interested in any of the personalities. She wasn't interested in any of the pointing figures. Or any of those things. She was interested only in one thing. The person of Christ. Folks, let's not be starstruck about preachers. You know, it's great to have preachers coming and sharing with us. and It's great to bring people even from America and other places. We should be starstruck Sunday after Sunday to know that the Lord's here. And I honestly believe it. Now, maybe, you, maybe you think I'm mad for thinking this, you know. But I honestly believe that every time we meet, he's here. Think about that for a moment. He's here. Christ is here. Praise your Lord. Why? Because he tells us in his word. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. He's here tonight, you know. Because we just didn't come here just to spend a Sunday evening. I could think of a million and one better places where you could be tonight. Where you could hear a better preacher with a better word. But you're here this evening. Why are you here? Because you know that he's here. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, sure. I think that's truly wonderful. He's here. Hallelujah. Only interested in him. In your walk with the Lord, some people, they'll not understand you. 
They don't understand what you're doing. They don't understand why you have taken time and spent money and broke open, open, open your alabaster box. They'll not understand that. That's fine. Don't worry about them. It's between you and the Lord. Your salvation is a personal thing. It's between you and the Lord. That's it. It doesn't matter what other people have to say about you. It's what he says about you. So if you want to, to praise him, you praise him. If you want to give him, you give him. Because isn't he, isn't he worthy? Isn't he precious? Glory to God. Glory to God. They won't understand you. They'll murmur about you. But let me remind you, just you push through. Because as she wrought a good work for the Lord Jesus, because he was precious, you can wrought a good work for the Lord, for he is precious. So just digress slightly a wee bit. The very next day after she did this, where was he? He was upon the colt, making his way into Jerusalem. Four days later, he was on the cross. I want you to remind you, I want you to think about this. Whenever he made his way into Jerusalem that day, he was talking about his prophecy. What did he smell like? He smelt like the king. Hallelujah. See when he stood all those days later in front of Pilate in his judgment hall at Gabbatha, what did he smell like? He smelt like a king. Oh, I wonder what it smelt like, those sweet olives. But you know what's even more wonderful? Whenever he comes, I could cry even thinking about this with joy. When you smell, as it were, spiritually, the sweet aloes of heaven, knowing that he is there, the fragrance of the Lord Jesus. There's nothing like him. The wonder Peter said he is precious. My final point is this. John 20, verses 11 to 18. I come to this, just no longer in a house, but they're, in a, they're at a, a garden. Mary at the sepulchre on the morning of his resurrection. But not knowing that yet. She didn't know that the Lord was risen from the dead. And she stoops down to look into the tomb. Wishing to do what? To anoint his body. And as he as she looks into the, into the tomb. What does she see? She sees two angels. Dressed in white. Seated where the Lord was. One seated at where his head would have been. And the other seated at where his feet would have been. Now I'm making this in Billy name. A reminder, that was a picture and a type of the Ark of the Covenant. Because on the lid, what did you have? You had two angels. And they sat on their wings facing one another. Oh my. This was a new covenant, folks. This was a new Ark. Glory to God. This was a new Ark. And she's standing there and she sees what is going on, sitting at the feet where the Lord would have laid. And the angels speak and they say, Woman, why weepest thou? She began to weep because she said, where is my Lord? She knew that that's the very place in which he had labeled. Where is my Lord? And her answer was this. Why do you weep? Her answer was this. Because they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him. What an answer. This powerful moment just shows how precious the Savior was to her. Give me a minute here to think. You're making your way to church some Sunday morning. And you're driving up out of the Ballysun Road or the Crumlin Road to come here. And you see something along the side of the road and you stop. And you get out. And you realise that the two strangers along the side of the road are two of the angelic host. Two beings that stand in the presence of God daily. And they begin to speak to you. Would you not be a wee bit... These are angels. I know for a fact that if that happened to any of us here, we'd be bursting in through those doors, pushing past Barry and Eddie, pushing past David. Give me the microphone. Give me the microphone. I will not testify. Is that not right? Is that not right? That's just the way it would be. But you know, what I think is wonderful. She wasn't interested in the two angels. No, not one bit. And like, when you think of this for a moment, like these are, these are two. I often think to myself, you know, when I read this, what, what would I have asked them, you know, today, if I met angels? I'd be asked about loved ones in glory. I would, I know I would. I'd be saying I'm sure they're having a great time up there. Glory to God. But you know, she wasn't interested in that. Wasn't interested in that at all. She wasn't concerned about them. 
She was concerned the fact that the one that she came to anoint, the one that she came to pour out more oil onto, he wasn't there. Folks, should we not be concerned if we're coming to meetings and the Lord's not there? Because there's some times that the Holy Spirit doesn't come to meetings. Remember hearing a preacher one time saying to a preacher, as he's making his way in through the door of a meeting, and the Holy Spirit says, away you on my way. I'm not welcome in there. What a shock. The Lord not welcome. There are many, many churches, folks. The Lord stands at the door and knocks. Let him on hear my voice and open the door. I'll come in and sup with him and him with me. Why was she only interested in him? Because, folks, we go back to our, our first verse that we read at the very beginning. The stone in which the builders have disallowed. He's precious. Precious. Precious far above gold or silver or anything else. He's precious. Truly, truly precious. Our next conversation is with, is with him who she thought was a, with the one that she thought was a gardener who comes along and asks the same question. Why do you weep? And she asked the gardener that question. Did you take him away? Take me to him that I may, I may carry him back? Now, I've got to be honest with you, unless Mary Magdalene was some woman, like, I don't imagine her being big and butch and broad or anything of those things. I really don't. But she was willing to carry the Lord back wherever he is. I carry him back and I lay him down wherever, wherever to the place in which he was laid. And you know what I think is wonderful? Whenever the Lord speaks to her and says, Mary, oh, hallelujah. And she knew straight away it was the Lord that she was speaking to. Lord, she says, Rabboni. Oh, Lord, it's you. Folks, he called you by your name. He called me by my name. The night that I was saved, he called me. Hallelujah. And you know, we walk past it every single morning as well, too. He's called us by our name. And we are his. Isn't it wonderful to know that he is wonderfully, wonderfully precious? And folks, as I close this this evening, you know, I just want to encourage you tonight. As the people of God, that in these days and in this, this generation, it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Where there's a, even a lack even among the church. Where we're really not much interested in the things of God anymore. And that's really, really sad. Let us be a people here who love the Lord. Love his word. Love his ways. Love his law. And let's not worry about the pointing fingers. And let's not worry about, about the place. Or let's not worry about the personalities or any of those things. And let him be our all in all. He's the one that we want to please. Come please in me. Please him. Come on, please in yourself. Please him. He's the one that we want to declare. He's the one that we love. He's the one that we serve. He's the one that we look to. Why? And we're back again to that wonderful statement by Peter. Because he is precious. And God bless us. We're going to see him. Let's just fire our heads and pray. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to stand here this evening and take up your word. And Father, I pray that these few remarks that I have made will be a blessing to your people, both here and those that are watching online as well. Lord, I pray that maybe someone who's watching that doesn't know this precious one that we know, that Lord, I pray that they would come to know Christ, whom to know is the hope of glory, as abundant life, and we can have eternal life in him. So, Father, I pray that you'd use this word as you will and pray this in Jesus' name. Bless your people here who have gathered this evening. Thank you, Lord, for each and every single one of them. And, Lord, I pray for their families as they're sitting here. Lord, I pray that you would speak to their families. For those who are, who are saved, continue to bless them, Lord, and build them in their faith most holy. And, Lord, for those who don't know you as their own and personal Savior, grant us, grant, grant us, O God, that household salvation that we so long for, O God. We pray this in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we, there are many things we could ask of you in these closer moments of the meeting. But, Lord, we'll wait until we're in the quiet, secret place along with you. Lord, we just give you, give you glory, give you honour and give you praise. And, Father, we thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, he is definitely precious to me. Bless Lord, I Lord. pray you would just accept of our thanks and our praise here within this little house. In Jesus' lovely name. Amen. 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 Bless you, Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord.